Hello everyone, welcome to Smart Catalyst. Today we are going to see the prelims analysis of the date 27th December 2018. So there are some 9 topics for today's prelims. So first one is the Hidai scheme by the Ministry of uh, Housing and Urban Affairs. Second one is why cement stuck with the luxury and sin items of 28% of the GST slab. And third one is world economy is said to feel the delayed trade war pain in 2019. And uh, fourth one is respect to places in news that is Libya. And uh, fifth one year end review of the Ministry of Tourism. Sixth one year end review of the Ministry of Agriculture, Cooperation and Farmers Welfare. And the seventh one is about the Information Fusion Center. And the eighth one is that the Andhra Pradesh and Telangana would have separate high courts hereafter. And the last topic is related to the angel tax provisions that is the angel investors and their rules. So the first article for prelims is the National Heritage City for Development and Augmentation Yojana which is the Hridai scheme which is taken from PIB. So this National Heritage City Development and Augmentation Yojana comes under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. So this scheme was launched in the year 2015 Jan and the duration of this scheme is for 3 years that is 2018. So what is the aim of the scheme is to preserve and revitalize or renovate the heritage cities. of India. The scheme was planned to launch in 12 cities and some of the main cities are Amritsar, Mathura, Varanasi, Gaya, Ajmer, Velankanni in Tamil Nadu and Kanchipuram. So the objective as I said the heritage conservation, beautification, cleanliness and safety through which the Swachh Bharat mission will also uh, incorporated into it and then the accessibility and service delivery of these cities. So this promotes the culture and tourism industry of India and it is important to know the other schemes which are related to the tourism industry of India that is the Prasad scheme that is the pilgrimage rejuvenation and spiritual augmentation drive and Adarsh Smarak Yojana wherein which 25 uh, archaeological site and monuments are to be named as Adarsh Smarak for upgradation for tourist related amenities. And some of the tourist circuits have also been established by this Ministry of Tourism. But here it, it has to be noted that this Hridai scheme is under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. And it is not under the Ministry of Tourism. So the next article for prelims is why cement stuck with the luxury sin items in 28% of the GST slab. So this article has been taken from the paper mint. So here we have to know why this cement which is an important good that is needed very much for the infrastructure projects has been placed under this 28% of the GST slab. So there are some reasons. So we can see the reasons a bit later but before that we have to see what is the condition of India's cement industry uh, and its geographical locations. If you see the main raw material for cement is limestone. This limestone is abundantly present in the states of Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. So the location of this, the cement industry will be based on the availability of the raw materials. If you see a fact that India is the second biggest producer of cement after China in world. So the housing sector is the biggest demand driver of the cement industry whereas the infrastructure is only 13 percentage and commercial construction 11 percentage and industrial construction is about 9 percentage. So in order to meet this 67 percentage demand we have to place this cement industry under the minimum GST slabs like 12 percent or 18 percentage but it has been kept under 28 percentage because of the reasons like cross holdings and limited competition in the cement industry. With regulators investigating cases, they have found that the cartelization of the cement industry has been predominantly monopolized in the cement industry especially. If you see a fact that the government agencies are the key consumers of cement for the various infrastructural projects like uh, bridges, roads, dams etc. So, if the benefit of GST cut is not passed on to consumers, the state will lose both the tax revenue and the price relief. 
It has to be noted that with the elections approaching in 2019, the government is keen that any tax revenue foregone for the benefit of the consumer reaches the intended beneficiary, which is the ruling party. So here we have to see what are the advantages for India through the cement industry. So at the robust demand which propels for the uh, need for reforms and reducing of the GST rate for the cement industry. The demand is that the government's focus on infrastructure and housing for all by 2022 needs a high cement demand. Besides these housing and infrastructure, the government has also taken some initiatives to develop a dedicated freight corridors and other north-south transport corridors where the requirement of the cement is very much significant. Also, the cement industry has a long-term potential in the sense that the sector holds large players with partial price control and a low threat from the substitutes. As I have said that the, there is a limited competition in the cement industry. So it leads to a long-term potential for the minimum large players. There are increasing investments are seen in the cement industry. A statistic shows that the US dollar of 5.26 billion has been invested in the cement industry between 2000 and 2018. Apart from cement, some 35 items have been placed under this 28% of the GST slab, like automobile parts, tobacco and other such products. These items are termed as sin items. So this may be probably asked in the prelims question. So the next article for prelims is the world economy is said to feel the delayed trade war pain in 2019. So this article has been taken from Mint. As we all know that the tensions between US and China and its trade rules and regulations and tariffs have caused damage across economies worldwide. So this is also going to continue in 2019 as statistics forecasts. So for the world economy, the threat of trade war has dissipated but not disappeared. So there are three risks which stand out which proves that the trade war pain may also be felt in 2019 economies of different countries. Some of them are the talks between China and US are not convincing and may end in failure with higher tariffs following further in 2019 also. It also to be noted that even without an increase in tariffs, the front loading of exports, which means that the capital investments in the export industries in the 2018 will reduce the shipments in 2019. This can be clearly illustrated that only if the investments in exports, uh, services, or industries are made, the demand driven production will be made accordingly and then it will be exported according to the needs. But if the investment plans are lingering because of this trade war, it may lead to reducing in the shipments of the products and services in 2019. So this may have a deterring effect on the economies worldwide. Besides this, the purchasing managers index, which shows the economic health of the manufacturing and the services has warned that there will be softening of demand because of this trade war between US and China. So these three risks has to be mitigated as soon as possible in order to elicit the regulated trade between the global economies and thereby facilitating the development of the developing countries like India and other like-minded countries. A forecast of global economic growth has shown that the world's economic growth will reduce considerably from 2018 to 2019. Apart from this, there will be deceleration of economic growth in the countries like Organization for Economic Cooperation Development Countries, US, Euro area, Japan, China, as well as in India. So now we shall see what are the implications for Indian economy. So the global trade may fall which hit the Indian exports. So because of this, there may be widening of the current account deficit. So this will lead to the balance of payment crisis. So ultimately, there may be a slowdown in the Indian economy growth. Also, there will be volatility in the Indian currency with respect to the dollar. Only very recently, the Indian currency rupee has appreciated to the normal levels as before. This can be illustrated with an example that if a good, say a chocolate costs for Indian rupees 50 and this is with respect to one dollar. Okay. If rupee appreciates, that is if that good becomes rupees 40 for one dollar, 
there will be reduction in competition in the global market for Indian goods. So this may affect the exports more. Also, if US imposes curbs on the Chinese garments and textiles, the retaliatory tariffs that has been posed by China may influence the US to dump its goods in the Indian markets. So New Delhi may have to impose the anti-dumping duties on the US goods. So if US reviews the patent rules, pharma of Indian industry will take a hit. So these are the impacts of the trade war in Indian economy. The International Monetary Fund has also forecasted that the trade by volumes will also slow down to 4 percentage in 2019 with respect to 4.2 percentage in 2018. So ultimately there will be an economic slowdown in the global economies. So because of the trade divergence that is the retaliating trade tariffs between US and China in 2018 may cause tariffs limbo in 2019. Because of this, there may be a high degree of uncertainty in the market and will have a continuing impact on the trade and investment plans. So, it is high time that the developed and developing economies should come to a conclusion through negotiations and thereby framing a rule-based order of trade and tariffs, thereby preserving the economic trade order. So, the next article for PLIMS we are going to see is the places in news that is Libya. The news is that the Islamic State have claimed its attack on the Libyan Foreign Ministry building. Because of this attack, three foreign officials have lost their life. So this becomes important for prelims point and its geography has to be studied. So if you see this Libya is an African continent which expands in the northern African region bounded by the Mediterranean Sea in the north and uh, the, it is uh, surrounded by five countries that is Tunisia. Algeria, Niger, Chad, Egypt as well as the sixth country of Sudan. So the capital of Libya is Tripoli. You have to note that the Gulf of Sidra is located in the coast of Libya. This Libya is also comprised by the Libyan desert which is a part of the Sahara desert. So, this Libya falls under the Saharan desert region. Apart from this, five countries like Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Mauritiana, Libya. So, these five countries are termed as Maghreb countries which extends in the northern Africa. This is because the range of Atlas Mountains extends between these region. So it is also profoundly called as land of Atlas. And the Tropic of Cancer passes through this Libya. So the next article for prelims is the year end review of the Ministry of Tourism in 2018. So this uh, has been taken from PIB. And in this, one important conclave have conducted in 2018 by the Ministry of Tourism, which is known as the International Buddhist Conclave. So this conclave will be uh, taking place once in every two years. So this year, the theme is Buddha Path, the Living Heritage. So this conclave is conducted in collaboration with the state governments of Maharashtra, Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, where most of the Buddhist places are widely present. So this year, one important thing is Japan has partnered with India to conduct this International Buddhist Conclave. That is the last before year in 2016, it was the ASEAN that has partnered with India for this conclave. So here you have to see the theme Buddha path refers to the middle path which is the teachings of the Buddha and the second one it is related to the eight great places of the path of Buddhism. This is called as Atta Mahatanani in Pali language. So these places are associated with important events of Buddha and his path of Buddhism. So this may elicit the peace, happiness, harmony and solace among the Buddhist states and Buddhist majority countries. So the next item for the prelims is the year end review of the Ministry of Agriculture which has been taken from PAB. So the news is the Pratan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana which focuses on the proper irrigation facility to be extended in the agricultural arable lands 
a fund has been created. This is called the micro irrigation fund. This fund will be under the aegis of NABAD and the corpus amount is of rupees 5000 crores. So here we have to see what is this uh, Pratan Mantri Krishi Shinchai Yojana. As I said that, uh, that India's irrigation level is below 50% as of now. So this has to be enhanced through some schemes like this Krishi Shinchai Yojana. So in this, there will be convergence of investments in the irrigation at the field level and expand the cultivable area under the assured irrigation and thereby improve on the farm water use efficiency. Only then the over depletion of the water resources and the water crisis can be resolved. So for this and to enable this, uh, the micro irrigation fund has been created. That is the National Bank of, of Agriculture and Rural Development will extend the loan to the state governments during this period. So these borrowings shall be paid back in 7 years with a grace period of 2 years. The loan amount from the micro irrigation fund of NABAD will be given under a very subsidized rate of 3% and this shall be accessed through public private partnership model also. So this will definitely incentivize the micro irrigation techniques which has been borrowed from Israel in the Indian soils and Indian agricultural lands. So this slide is pertaining to the minimum support prices announced for the crops for this year. As UPSC is in the trend of asking MSP for which crops as asked in the last year, it is important to note that which crops are coming under this MSP. Totally there are 23 crops including the Rabi, Karif and other crops will be coming under the MSP. Among this the main uh, Karif crops are pa Paddy, Jover, Bajra, Maize, Ragi and similar other crops. And among Rabi, there are only 6 crops which includes wheat, barley, gram, masoor, rapeseed, safflower. And other crops includes the copra which is the coconut shells and the jute and sugarcane. For sugarcane, it should be noted that the fair remunerative prices are announced. So, it is for sugarcane that is the fair remunerative price will be dealing with the pricing and procurement procedures. So, for exam point of view, it should be noted that which crops will be coming under the MSP. So the next item for prelims is, the Navy may very soon put the information fusion center into operation in the Indian Ocean region. So this article has been taken from the Indian Express. So what is this information fusion center? In order to strengthen the maritime security in the Indian Ocean region, this information fusion center has been established under the Navy's information management and analysis center which is present in Gurugram, Haryana. So this center will share the information with other countries which are present among the Indian Ocean region to improve the maritime domain awareness. So it is the single point center that links all the coastal radar chains. So this may come into operation very soon in order to improvise the maritime security. So the next item for prelims is that Andhra Pradesh and Telangana to have a separate high courts very soon and this article has been taken from Hindu. After the bifurcation in 2014 through the Andhra Pradesh Reorganization Act, till now there is only one court for Telangana and Andhra Pradesh which is situated in Hyderabad. So here we have to note what is the constitutional provision for establishment of a new high court. As per article 214 of the Indian constitution, it states that there shall be a high court for each state. As of now, the Telangana and Andhra Pradesh are sharing a high court in Hyderabad itself. So upon uh, implementation of the Supreme Court order and the center's notification, there will be a new high court set up very soon in Amravati which is going to be the capital of Andhra Pradesh. So upon creation of this high court, the number of high courts will become to 26 from 25. And one more fact should also be noted that in India, the only union territory that is the Delhi is having the high court. So the last article for today's analysis is government may water down the angel tax provisions. This article has been taken from Hindu. The center is mulling to abolish the section 56 clause 2 of the angel tax which is in the income tax act of 1961. So what is this section 56 clause 2 says? It says that if a startup receives a funding that is higher than its fair market value from an angel investor that is the external investor 
30 percentage of angel tax will be levied. So here we have to note what is this angel investors. Angel investors are simply external investors like friends or uh, relatives who may fund for a startup. So if the funding of these angel investors to these startup if it is higher than its fair market value 30 percentage of tax will be levied upon these startups. So this tax is called angel tax. So this angel tax shall be exempted for companies only when these startups are recognized by the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion with a valid certificate of recognition. So other attract tax over valuation under this section 56 clause 2 of the Income Tax Act. So this should be abolished because the angel tax provision is also hurting the startup ecosystem. So this should be liberalized to have provisions like to unlock the domestic capital, trigger of a new wave of startup value and job creation and better and more conducive tax regime for the startups.